Since the summer of 2020, China's real estate developers have been experiencing a succession of debt crises that have led to the collapse of developments and a sharp decline in real estate investment, housing sales, and new construction. The owners who were unfortunate enough to purchase unfinished units have tried fighting for their rights in various ways. Some have moved into the broken buildings, and some have refused to pay their mortgage. As the 20th National Congress is to be held on October 16th, the authorities are shouting the slogan of guaranteeing the delivery of buildings for the purpose of maintaining stability. And local government officials are also trying their best to get housing companies to resume work in an attempt to alleviate the property market crisis and protect their official positions. But experts say that China's real estate market has entered a cold winter. The phenomenon of broken buildings may become more intense. The authorities' plan to resume work are only a show before the 20th Congress. This is the construction site of a dilapidated building resuming work. The authorities claim to resume construction, but there are only a few people on the site and an excavator digging aimlessly. The owners questioned whether this was a real resumption of work or a show. Owners of unfinished buildings in Jiangxi Province started a no construction, no mortgage repayment, complete construction to continue repayment campaign, and it has spread across the country at the end of June, according to the online platform GitHub. As of September 21st, the loan suspension has spread to more than 100 cities, including Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Zhengzhou, with at least 343 projects involved. The expansion of the movement has not only dealt a blow to China's already sluggish real estate market, but has also increased the risk to financial and social stability. Some analysts estimate that the total amount of mortgage loans at risk of default in China is between 150 to 370 billion U.S. dollars. In order to maintain stability in the face of the campaign, the CCP has adopted a series of measures. Requiring banks to provide new credit to support the resumption of construction projects, and local governments to help complete the task of building delivery. At the same time, the Chinese authorities have initiated a special loan of about 29 billion U.S. dollars to support the preservation and delivery of buildings of failed projects in different regions. However, according to some professionals' analysis. The shortage of funds for China's broken buildings may reach trillions of dollars. The 29 billion dollars is just a drop in the bucket and can hardly make a substantial impact. In the pressure of the central government and requirements of the 20th Congress, the local governments have made commitments to protect the delivery of buildings. The city of Zhengzhou in Henan Province, where the situation of unfinished buildings is most serious. Announced on September 6 that it would work hard for 30 days to ensure that all construction projects would resume. On September 8, the Zhengzhou municipal government called a meeting of more than 60 developers who had overdue project deliveries, so that they would do everything possible to undertake or cooperate with the task of ensuring the delivery of buildings. The Zhengzhou government also issued a warning. Housing enterprises that do not cooperate with the resumption of work will be investigated for tax evasion. Those that embezzle project construction funds will be directly arrested. Under such strong pressure from the government, some properties have indeed started to resume construction. On September 13th, an owner of Xihu Country Garden in Zhengzhou said in an interview with foreign media that their complex had not fully resumed work. The site had two buildings. There are only a few people doing some random work, like sweeping the floors, just putting on a performance. The resumption of work is a sham, in order to cope with the government's 20th Congress. The owner said that no one protests in the streets anymore, or they will be arrested by the authorities. The government has also honored its promise to use its power to arrest some of the developers who have violated the law. Late night on September 21st. Zhengzhou announced that it had taken measures against 21 suspects from five developers. The deadline of October 6 has come, the day officials of Zhengzhou had promised to resume work on all the unfinished buildings. So have they? Chinese media, the paper, 
reported that 147 suspended and semi-suspended residential projects were identified, 145 of which have been fully resumed. But just a few days ago, Chinese media Caixin.com reported on October 2nd the resumption of real estate construction in Zhengzhou City. The report quoted local industry sources as saying that there are more than 100 suspended construction sites in Zhengzhou, and just over 60% of them have resumed work one after another. The report also said that Zhengzhou launched the resumption program on September 6th, and since then, some of the projects that cannot cover their debts have been unable to resume work. There are also some suspended projects that have restarted construction, but the bailout funds are insufficient and the resumption of work is only to meet official inspections, to give an appearance of resumption. The local real estate enterprises in Zhengzhou told Caixin that relevant departments have found out the construction funds required for the delivery of each suspended construction project. But the relief funds are limited at the moment, and the amount that can be allocated to a single property is very small, and cannot cover the shortfall in construction funds. With unfinished buildings being a problem for the past 10 years, financial data shows that there still needs to be a 1.6 billion yuan investment in order to apply for the national special loan of 515 million yuan. And even then, only 387 million yuan in funds are available in the first batch. The report pointed out that the problems with construction suspension is complex, and it will be extremely difficult for Zhengzhou to save these projects. The main problems include limited relief funds, difficulties in recovering misappropriated funds, current downturn in the housing market, and supply exceeding demand. Even if construction resumes with poor sales and low funds, it's very likely that a second suspension of construction will happen soon after. In fact, Zhengzhou's phrase, work hard for 30 days, is kind of a slogan propaganda. This is a replica of the Great Leap Forward, and is actually a show to coincide with the 20th National Congress. Moreover, if the building is delivered in such a short period of time, it is difficult to avoid tofu drag construction. Recently, there are videos from local netizens showing that the units they bought have finally been finished. Yet, they found out that the new houses were defective everywhere. Some roofs are cracked and leaking. Floorboards could be dug through by hand, and tiles are falling off. Zhengzhou is the provincial capital with the most number of unfinished projects. Almost one out of every three units sold is not delivered on time. The immediate cause of the failed projects is the breakage of the developer's capital chain but the root cause is the communist government's poorly enforced and regulated housing pre-sale system. According to Yan Yuejin, director of research at Shanghai E-House, 90% of new homes purchased in China are purchased during the construction phase. This pre-sale system requires strict capital controls to ensure that projects do not fall through, but under the CCP's corrupt system, such controls are often not in place. Let's take the Qifu City Project, which is the largest, most well-known, and longest-lasting unfinished project in Zhengzhou, as an example to see the reasons for the formation of unfinished buildings. The Qifu City Project involves 34 high-rise buildings with more than 6,000 houses, and the project started in December 2013 when the project was launched. The pre-sale was started before the construction site was confirmed, and a large amount of money was collected in advance. The planned delivery date was 2018, but even now it still has not been delivered. In fact, it was not until 2019 that some of the buildings in the project received their pre-sale certificates. A special feature of the Qifu City project is that some of the properties signed internal group purchase agreements with the Zhengzhou TV station, the housing authority, the public security bureau, the Taxation Bureau, and other authorities at prices significantly lower than those of the surrounding properties. Because of the low price, the pre-sale was very hot, and some people even gave gifts worth tens of thousands of dollars in order to grab the purchase ticket, or bought it directly from civil servants who were eligible to participate in the group purchase. 
What's ironic is that even though many of these buyers are employees of the housing authority who hold power and even have direct supervisory responsibilities, they were not able to avoid the fate of the project from falling apart. The owners have repeatedly fought to defend their rights, but because developers had already diverted the sales funds to other uses and had long defaulted on the construction payments, they were forced to stop construction work. It was only in April this year that the owner of the project was arrested on suspicion of contract fraud and misappropriation of funds. This case shows just how irresponsible the CCP's supervisory department really is. Because of Chifu City's special status, it's also among the first batch of projects to resume construction. According to the footage taken by a Chinese media reporter on September 1st, the site is overgrown with weeds due to years of suspension, and some construction materials have rusted and expired. Some facilities can no longer be used. So even if the building is completed and delivered, the quality would probably be on par with tofu drag projects. In addition, the resumption of work involves huge problems. The funds raised so far can only barely maintain the start of construction. The subsequent shortage of funds has not yet been settled, and the arrears of construction workers, upstream and downstream suppliers, service providers, etc., has not yet been resolved. Therefore, whether the final housing can be completed and delivered is still an unknown. In fact, the problem of unfinished buildings in China has existed for a long time and has been very serious. Just that the authorities have turned a blind eye. The reason why the government is now paying attention to this phenomenon is that, for one, the nationwide outbreak of repayment suspension may lead to financial risks. The second is that the CCP's zero COVID policy has caused the economy to wither and public discontent to boil over. In addition, the CCP's suppression of real estate through various policies has dealt a severe blow to developers, making the previous high turnover model of land acquisition, construction, pre-sale land acquisition difficult to continue. Local governments, which rely heavily on the sale of land to real estate developers to balance their expenses, have lost their source of revenue and their debts have skyrocketed. China's huge local debts, combined with the debts of real estate enterprises, pose huge risks to the country's financial system. In addition, a large number of unfinished buildings also make many buyers reluctant to continue buying, resulting in a sharp drop in housing sales. Aggravating the debt problem of developers. If this problem is not solved, then the collapse of the real estate industry will be just around the corner.